is episode 139 of Hebrews in Exile with our honorable teacher, Robert B. Holman Jr. and Sean Appleton. And we're going to label this podcast The Circumstances of Miscommunication. And really, the answer is in the name of the podcast that I just professed. We are living in a time of misinformation. And because of that, it's created a circumstance for us, Hebrews in exile, that has allowed us not to be able to return back to the Most High because we're just not getting the correct information that we need. So we're going to crack the can wide open on this topic. Hebrews in exile, you know what we do. Let's go. Give me more power. Give me more love. Yeah. Give me more passion. This is Rabbi Robert B. Holman Jr. and Sean. Oh. <laughs> Excuse me. Let's start that over again. This is Rabbi Robert B. Holman Jr. and. and Rabbi Robert B. Holman Jr. And, and this is. <laughs> <laughs> this is Sean Appleton and this is Hebrews in, in exile. exile. Shalom. Oh, you want the Ian? <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Oh it's gonna goodness. be a fun one today, folks. <coughs> fun, 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 fun. Yeah. Um. The circumstances of misinformation. Ah. That's a heavy one. You gotta compare me for something like that. <laughs> the circumstances of misinformation. Our people, I suppose, are still searching for some semblance of truth and. When I get emails and text messages with stuff in it that doesn't make <laughs> any doggone sense. I'm sorry. <laughs> it, I'm trying to keep it together over here. It, it, cause, it causes me to, to wonder, you know. What's the problem? Do you, do you really want to come out? Really? What kind of questions did y'all ask? You know? <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. And, um... Well, let me ask you this. Since you're there, the questions that you're getting asked, are they... Are they Similac questions? Or are we eating steak? No. Um... I don't in the, in that in 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 that in that mm -hmm. context I don't I can't even define it as food. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, people are you, you have to realize uh brother Appleton. <laughs> <laughs> yes sir. <laughs> <laughs> you have to realize that our people are in a quandary. Oh. They are. They're in a quandary. Mm -hmm. And even though, okay, let's let's just let's just walk this back a little bit, okay? Okay. A few years ago, this house was full. Agreed. I can attest to that. And they were looking for truth. And they came to FDF because they heard us delivering uh, teachings that were resonated with them that were true. Mm -hmm. Until. Until. Until we crucified the sacred cow. Mm -hmm. And then we could go to the Greek text and say, and they all went away. Yes. Saving those that stayed. Mm -hmm. But these people were looking for truth or 
and, and I, I got to ask my, as I stop and think about it, I'm not sure what truth they were looking for. Mm. And as I get things like this, uh, Danica Patrick, uh, what's his name? Uh, Billy. Uh, ben Carson. Ben Carson. Is his name Ben, ben Carson? Carson? Is this a Billy Carson? Is it Billy, Billy Carson? Billy Carson or Ben Carson? Billy Carson. Billy Carson. Ben Carson is another. Yeah, uh, he's a. Dr. Ben Carson yeah, is the. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. The, uh, no, yeah, 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 yeah. Figure, political yeah, figurehead. Yeah. But when I get things like this, Billy Carson, mm -hmm. and he wants to explain God and religion within a concept that sounds that if you're not wise and if you don't have understanding and you don't know who the most high is, you go, well, man, this sounds really good. Yeah. See, here, let me put something that resonated just immediately that happened to us this past Shabbat. You realize what happened this past Shabbat. Yeah. And the most high just kicked the doggone door down and yes, said, I'm he did. coming in here and I don't care whether or not y'all like it or not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Came in here and was in the midst of us. So when he asked this young lady or this young lady asked him a question of trying to uh, cognitively understand who the most high is, he can only at best give her a 50% answer, even if he understands, because we had a podcast previously that says you can't understand the most high unless you have something that starts with the letter E, some experiential knowledge right. with this whole entire narrative. You can cognitively try to explain it to someone in terms of what they might be able to relate to, right? but until you experience the right. most high and actually the lifestyle. I don't know if you can, you can, you, you can't, can't I, mean, I mean, you it. can't, you can't. And, and I mean, uh, I'm listening to one of the questions is, that she asked him. Um, who is God? Right. Yeah. Like, and he goes off on some tangent about molecules and, <laughs> and stuff that, outside the, the realm of anything that is, is within the form of Scripture, he comes up with this idea of saying, well, uh, we're gods, and we draw power from the great source, and we distribute out to each other, and blah, 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 and I'm going... I'm listening to people who have not ever had an experience with the opulent spirit. Exactly. And notice something else in his explanation. Does he quote anything that even oh, sounds remotely no, close no, to what no, the Most High no, said? Because the Most High no, gives you a definition no. of who the Most High is. Yeah what that construct is all about, what the Most High has created and what the Most High has done. He got into, when has Moshe ever cracked open something and said, you know what, if you take a look at this mitochondrial DNA and these molecules go with this type of hexagonal, hexagonal uh, 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 see, atom that puts an, no, no see, he's I knew, not explaining I, I knew you could, that. I knew you could explain that. <laughs> I, knew, I knew that, I knew that you, I knew that you could wrap your head around it. Take this hydrogen I, molecule I, and put it over. I, I couldn't, I could not, I could not, I couldn't, I, I'm going, I'm going, this is doggy doo doo. Yeah, I mean, he wants to, if you want to attack it from a, 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 a DNA type standpoint, you know, I guess you could make something. But again, for those of us that are, know the behavior and know our most high, the Most High explains. It's very simple. It's very. It's it's Occam Razor's idea. You can see who I am through the manifestation of what I've made. Of what I've made. I've made again. I'm gonna keep saying because I like to wave and wag my tail about this. I made a biodegradable supercomputer that's being piloted by a spirit that I created. That I gave. 
Oh, would you would you, would you repeat that? I mean, okay, I'm gonna say that one more time because that, that was. I'm gonna say that, that slower. Was, that's that slapped me upside my head. <laughs> Pow! One more time. Right. One more time. One, one more. One more again. You are. I am a biodegradable, a biodegradable super com super computer computer that is being piloted that is piloted by a spirit by a spirit given by the Most High given by the Most High. That's 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 awesome. That's what you are. That's awesome. Because it encompasses both entities. The fact that the Most High made that piece of equipment that you're driving that evolves over time. And then he also supplanted it with a spirit that based on your experiential knowledge grows along with the construct. So by the time that you're an octogenarian or some later on, you've got all this wealth of wisdom and information that you should have that your spirit and the house has attained together. I'm impressed. And that, you know what the dopest part about it is? There's no computer on the face of the face of the world right now that is organic that will return to the ground. Name me a computer. Name me a hard drive. A motherboard. Let's name them all. RAM. Computing system. That when I get done and tired with it and when it's time for an upgrade, and this is the beautiful thing about the most high, is that that computer never needs to be updated. It's continuing, even though it continues to learn from its environment, it never needs to upgrade anything. It's one of the most, it's a miracle. And so this is how you explain the Most High? I see the manifestation of the Most High sitting in front of me. But you want to go to some metaphysical level that I cannot see. Oh, okay, well... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe some people need that kind of data to look into the sky to see something Santa Claus coming out of the sky or something else. Maybe they need to see that. I don't. What I need to do is turn into text. And all the Most High has to do with me is tell me, I made everything that's here. How can I prove that? Well, can I see a human being in front of me? Sure can. Can I see the ground? Sure can. Can I see the sky? Sure can. I can see all the manifestations of the Most High, and I can also see an opulent nation of people that's in exile who's violated that word as a manifestation of what the Most High has said. So you don't need to go to some molecule level to explain the Most High to me. Some people may need that, but I don't. I'm going to take my seat somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> ah. <laughs> because we overcome we are overcomplicating this thing to its nth degree. My goodness. I got to say this. I was gonna hold this back for my question of the week, and I'm gonna do it again. But there was a little there was a question in the chat room. This past week, and I hope these, I hope you don't, I hope don't people don't get upset. No, there's nothing in the world like a giant. No, the Nephilim aren't the 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 incantations of the divinic realm coming down to the earth and mating with women. Wait a minute. You want me to sit around and believe that these angels are sitting up there looking at y'all like y'all porno or something and got a heart on and came down here and cohabitated with that? Those are that. That's for them people that still believe in their whole entire e and angelic thing that happens with this uh, 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 um, Virgin Mary birth that the divine can come down and sit there and impregnate a woman. That doesn't work. It's never worked. And when you lead into stuff like that, and let me just answer it from my, my perspective. When you go back to the original Hebrew text, and don't say nothing about no divine beings. Nope. That says, what? That says the sons of the Most High. 
All right? The rulers. The rulers of that land. And I want to actually, I'm going to give this to you now so you have a way of looking at it. You got to go back and you have to read the text. When we're sitting here and we're looking at all this stuff, we have to look at the agendas and how these things were written. If you look at, if you look at how the text falls, it falls in a way where it says in the pretext, which is the previous chapter, it says that Methuselah lived to be a 900 and some odd years old. This person lived to be X amount of years, years old. This person lived to be X amount of years old. And then the chapter ends, and then it goes in to this next part that says, well, my spirit won't be with man always. So they'll be 120 years old. That part of the text is talking about what was talking about above it. It's not talking about somebody coming out the sky and impregnating women. <laughs> that is talking about my spirit is not going to be wed with man because all of y'all uh, prior to this was living to be almost a thousand years old. And that's not what's going to happen from here on out. So my point in bringing that up is to say, if you even look at the fact that when you read the Hebraic text, see, this is what I'm talking about. See, now I'm on a tangent right now. When you read Hebraic text, and for those of you that know how to read Hebrew, there's no such thing as chapters and verses in these books. It's one big, long paragraph. So the Catholics are the ones that came in and said, oh, okay, this is going to be chapter number one, two, three, four, five. Five, and we're going to use verses to break up the sentences on how we see fit. When you look at this book, or any book for that matter, now I'm not saying that this was wrong, that the Catholics did this. This was something that's germane to the Catholics. I think that actually helps us and aids us in our ability to find things quickly. That's its purpose, okay? But we can see in this particular issue where the chapter wasn't carried or broken in the right area, where people can believe that, oh, there must be angelic hosts that fall out of the sky that want to procreate with women. That's not the case at all. It's a totally different thought. And because of the way it's written, it's combining two things that don't need to be combined. That is in the advent of thank you, Catholics, for jacking that up, for leading people down a road that says, OK, now, but what does that establish? Because if we can believe that angelic hosts came out the sky and impregnated women of the world, we can also believe that angelic hosts came down and impregnated this person called Jesus, who had a, just had a birthday, apparently, a couple of days ago. No way, no how does that work? We are taking stuff because we still and I love the way that you you framed it. I am, and I'm not going to apologize for running away with this. I don't know what's going on with me right now, but okay. I'm, I'm I just, love the way I'm, you framed I'm, it. I'm just riding here. You, 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 you got the mic. You got the floor. You framed it perfectly when you said, okay, imagine this. Your favorite team. They've prepared all year long for the big day, for the big game. Mm-hmm. And there's nothing like when you step out on the field and if you've seen a field where it's dark yeah. and they kick the lights on, yep. but there's still places in that stadium where there is shadows. shadows. And that's one of them because it carries over from Christianity. It is not a Hebraic thought. Do, 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 the shadow knows. <laughs> 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 to think in the realm of of angelic hosts. They do not sit around thinking that y'all are cold-blooded. Ooh, I'm gonna go down and get me some of that right there. Because if that was the case, would none of y'all pretty women be with none of us? Because it would still be happening to this day. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean... And it doesn't. I mean... <laughs> the issue for our people, and once again, I'm gonna come back to a point. The Most High has given the responsibility to capable teachers to teach. He has given. Right. He has given. Correct. Everybody trying to teach 
has not been given that responsibility to teach. And just because they have a little bit of knowledge, they think they want to go teach. But you can't, you can't function that way if the Most High hasn't called you to do that. And how would you know the Most High has called you to do something? Well, one of the main reasons, one of the main ways that you can tell that the Most High has called you to do something is that he puts his stamp of approval on it. And his stamp of approval is visible. Mm. So when the prophets, when he, when he called the prophets to speak for him and they went out to speak to Israel, Israel knew, they knew that this voice that's coming to them is representing the Most High. It wasn't, well, um, I, I don't know, where'd you come from? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. You know, where'd you come from? Um, what, what, school, what school did you get your learning, your credentials from? Right, right, you know? right. And you're not saying stuff that's outwardly, I mean, overt, overtly blasphemous. Right. At the, <laughs> at the same time. Right. You know, so when we're looking at scripture texts, we have, I, I, I'm going I, 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 I said this, Kenya, 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 there you are, Kenya, thank you. I was I wasn't out of bounds with that about no, the, my no, explanation no, no, wasn't because no, no. I'm not trying no, to no no come on man <laughs> come on come on come on brother just trying to brought, come on ambassador some clarity come on ambassador that's okay, what we do okay, okay all right and, and 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 that's what we do and if the fire if the fire ignites and kindles in your heart that strong that you need to say it then I'm gonna tell you you gotta. Say, you better say it else I come and slap it out of you. <laughs> you go, why okay. is Rabbi slapping? Because you won't say it. Very good. Very good. Very good. So, I apologize. Kenya. She's there. Okay. So last week, I made a comment that, you know, while we were doing the podcast, some of you were over there in Proverbs. Well, ah. I, I, I have to go to Proverbs and I... I, I I stated a text in Proverbs. And that text in Proverbs says, in all thy ways, Can acknowledge me, and I will direct your path. And I answered it for Kenya, but I didn't answer it for everybody. Mm -hmm. But now that this has come up in this context of where we're talking tonight, people need to understand that that particular text in Proverbs has a dual meaning. Yes, we should acknowledge the Most High in everything that we do mm -hmm. so that he can orchestrate and direct the things that we're going to do. But that's not the essential meaning of the text. Mm. The essential meaning of the text is when you are reading my word mm -hmm. and you need understanding, mm -hmm then ask me and I will direct your understanding. That's the, that, that's, the central, that's the central understanding of that particular text. Mm -hmm. The shallow end is, okay, I'm getting ready to go do something. I need to, I need to consult the most high. That's shallow. That's shallow. But in thy ways, when you need some consultation, your first my first my first inquiry is to the most high and then he's going to give me the direction that i need to have in life even see that you know what that plays a part into something that you said in this past shabbat adding to what you're saying here that was i'm going to tell you you have these things when you do these shabbats you say some things that are earth shattering and for me i'm going to i'm going to go all back, back to one of them which was this issue what you said about Noah? Why they were beating on the door to oh. get in? The people were beating on the door to save their own tails. They weren't trying to no. acquiesce to the Most no. High's no. word. I no. mean, they weren't trying to to say, okay, we did something wrong. And then here, this this Pashabot, you did it again when you said when you did the definition of blasphemy. Oh, and it kind of plays a part in what we're talking about here, where you're saying, okay, where 
I'm inquiring of the Most High all of the things that I need in order to have an understanding about what is what I'm doing. So in all thy ways, get an understanding and yes. seek the Most High yeah. for that. But at the same time, I'm doing that because I have a sincere value in not blaspheming the Most High when I'm out and about. Because you define what blaspheming is for us now, which is that individual who knows Torah and decides to act unseemingly towards, uh, and everybody's looking at it like, this cannot be the depiction of what the Most High is. You are literally, if this is what the Most High is, it's kind of like what they're doing in Christianity yes, today. Yes, if this yes. is what Christ and Christianity yes. is about, then I don't want to be have any part of this. And, and, this yeah, is a mess. Yeah, I mean, because this is, this is what the Most High, I mean, if, if you look up in text, if you go in text and look up the word, um, um, uh, blaspheme my name in text, you have to read the pretext and the, and, the, and, and the text itself. And you will see that the action is not indicative of using curse, curse words mm -hmm. to profane his name. That's not, that's not the issue. Mm -hmm. The issue is your action. The Most High says to Israel, you are the covenant people. Mm -hmm. I birthed you. Mm -hmm. My name is on you. Mm. But you're acting indifferent towards me, whereby in the eyes of the nations, you are profaning my name. Right. Now, let's bring this, let's bring this central. You have two sons. I do. Your sons carry the Appleton name. They do. I am sure, beyond a reasonable doubt, that you have instructed those young boys that when you leave this house, you represent the Appleton household. Without a doubt. Ingrained it in them from day one. And when you act contrary to the way you have been brought up, Mm -hmm. then you are disrespecting and you are blaspheming the name of, of our family. That's right. Which is, it's a, this, this issue continues to keep compounding itself. Looking and seeking the most highest wisdom, acting in a way that's not unseeming. Right. Why, why you're out and having that pride. And then, this is where I, we gave kudos to my wife, where she was giving her testimony when we were having dinner yeah. about how she had got this new position yeah. that, that she had. Yeah. And we're listening intently as to what's, what's happening, but what stuck out to me, which was really poignant, which I haven't got to yet, <laughs> is the fact that she said, this is my heart's desire to have this job, but most high, I'm going to seek you out first. Do you want me there? And I thought that that was so unique and so um, respectful. And I found a lot of pride in that because what she's doing is she's saying, it's not my will anymore. Right. When I step out of, this, out of these doors, I represent the kingdom. When I, and when I represent the ambassadorship of Yahweh's exiled empire, I have to, we, we talked about this yeah, too, is that yeah. leadership gets looked at differently right. than everybody else. Right. Because we're out in front and we have to be exemplary and be the totality as much as we can, the embodiment of what text is. Yeah. So um, at the end of the day, like I said, you know, seeking the most high, it looks like these formulas that are buried in here for success. Right. <laughs> for the most high, and you wouldn't know that you if you know, didn't no, read it. No, and 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 you know, with, with that being with that being said, having been lost in the minutia of Christian teaching, ah, uh, yeah, um, it eroded away the very principal things and the principal actions of the Most High, and was and credit was given to somebody oh, I can't say that 
credit's given to somebody who can't do anything. Right. True. But we've been made, we have been made to believe mm -hmm. that he has a power that he does not have. Correct. Correct. So, so now, the question, I can hear the question in the minds of people, well, then, uh, if Jesus didn't answer my prayer, then who did? I'm glad you asked. Yeah. I'm glad you asked. Great question. Because what I want to do, what I want to tell you, you should get up every morning and thank God, mm -hmm. who happened to have a name, oh, yeah. who is the orchestrator of all things, has seen fit enough to look past your ignorance and hear your request. Mm. And that's called mercy. And you don't mm. realize that what he says is, I will not give my glory to another. But yet and still, he looks past your ignorance. Mm hmm answers your prayer in spite of the fact that you want to make him compared to a demigod for which in Isaiah he asked a question, to whom do you compare me? Yeah, that's, that's a... Mm -hmm. To whom am I compared since I'm the one who created the eternal people? I'm the one that 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 created the heavens and the earth and everything that's in it. I, Yahweh, did. Who do you compare me with? And yet and still, I look past your ignorance. Mm hmm And thought enough of you as a person to say, I'm going to answer your request. I'm going to answer your request, yeah. Anyway. You know, it's funny to me, as 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 we're jumping around from place to place, I'm like, for so many years, we believed in the messenger boy. Because that's all he is. Just a messenger boy. You can't come to the Father unless you come, but you're just a messenger. Even if that was true. How in the world am I going to sit there and be, put my faith in something that, for the, for the person that's supposed to be the, Interlocu interlocutor, that's what the word is. <laughs> this is astonishing. I just, like I said, you know, the Most High has given us an opportunity to be able to, to hear and listen and be able to learn, and we just needed to be awake enough to let the Most High sit back and just do the work. I mean... <laughs> That's, I mean, and that's what I wish that I wish that was something that you know most of our people could understand, because they literally think that this is. I mean, you, 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 you. My mind is blown. It because I can't. The reason why I'm stammering is because I have to watch what I say because I can't come off like, oh, okay. You know what? Everybody that's in Christianity is blah, 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 blah. and we were there too for a very, very long time, for decades. And we know what it's like. I mean, you know, it's sometimes it gets we get locked up mm -hmm. in just trying to um Explain Yahweh. Yeah. Because I mean, you can only fathom him to a to the point where he reveals himself to you so that you can explain him. And yet when he reveals that part to you, there's still another, there's still another massive part of him that you don't know. Yeah. Yeah. The genius I can just tarp on one. The genius of the most high. Just period, the genius of it. Because you know. like I had indicated earlier, 
I'm going to go outside. It's currently raining outside in Sacramento tonight, right now. But if it wasn't, I'm going to go outside and I'm going to get a pile of dirt and I'm going to bring it in here. And I'm going to ask you to go ahead and turn that into a supercomputer that can think for itself and gets old. We can look at the end result of the creativity of the Most High. But there is an aspect that science, biology, physics cannot explain. So you can only go so far. Before you just have to say, I'm not in control. Yeah, and, and you see, that's and that's the that's the that's the key. The Most High is so far above that which He has created, and yet and still, I'm going to come back to what your your opening statement about us being this computer that never needs to be an upgrade. Mm -mm. But yet and still, man's inability to be able to grasp the magnitude of the Most High causes him to make these asinine efforts. Yeah. As opposed to, why don't you just let the Most High be the Most High? Yeah. And don't try to get in and try to explain explain Him and who He is and, and all. He, he, first of all, he, he says to Mashe, when Mashe, he says, Iye asher Iye, I am that I am, will be who I am. Mm -hmm. I am he who was in the beginning. I am he that is now. I am he that is going to be in the future. So that makes me the first, the last. It makes me the first, the present, and the last. And I'm always present, and there's no, there's no altering or changing about me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And mm -hmm. there's no one that can, there's, there's nothing that you can bring into existence to compare with me. You can't make a, nim, a demigod and then say he's made after the order of me. That's, <laughs> that's not possible. <laughs> right, because what it would have to say is that you have an understanding of the Most High so much that you made this, this, this demigod. Mm -hmm. that, 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 and then you want to <laughs> put it, you want to put it on me and say, well, I made him a little lower than the angels and gave him a name that's above every name that at the name of him, every knee should bow. Well, now you're telling me that the Most High has subjugated himself to second place. Exactly. To his own creation. To his own creation. <laughs> yeah, I, you, you wouldn't even do, and that's what I'm saying. From, the, from a practical standpoint, you wouldn't even do that. You wouldn't go out there and craft something out of your own out of your own hands. Computer, woodwork, I don't care what it is. Skyscraper, I don't care, whatever you want to whatever we want to call it. And then, like you said, subjugate yourself to it. You pray to it upon which you've made. Does it seem right? No. No, it doesn't it doesn't work that way. And you Not know, you know, we you know, Sean, we talk about the most high in such a hot, I mean, I, I'm i going to say this. I'm going to say it because my father always used to say, it's a poor dog who won't wag his own tail. Agreed. Yahshayahu, Isaiah, he opens up the language and he says, on the day that Uzziah died, mm -hmm. I looked and I saw the Most High. He was high and lifted up and his train filled the temple. He's visualizing, he's, he's visualizing this opulent spirit. And, and, and Isaiah looks at and he says, I see him high and lofty. When you see something and you understand that it's high and lofty, you don't try to bring it down to a state where it loses that sense of aura. Yeah. That's stupid. That's We've, we've said this before. Even in the Most High's appearance upon which he's, he's apparently 
Anytime that you see the Most High dealing with our people, it's in one way. It's nothing but opulence. It's nothing but elegance. When the Most High has his temple made in the, in the desert, in today's money, that one room alone would be $65 million if you just took all the materials in it. That's not including all the labor that you would have to, to, to have to, in order to assemble it, to put it together. And that's just one room with all the bronze and gold and everything that had been all the acacia wood, which if you do a, some, um, it's interesting, uh, read on acacia and its properties, that is physical properties that it has. It's, it's biochemistry that, that makes it up and why that particular wood is being used. But my point in bringing all that up is, is that we know the Most High is often being, like you said, lofty, lifted up, holy, and in, in the sense of set apart, when the Most High has this realm here in the earth, everything is done at a 100% level of opulence and elegance. Yeah. And then this dude comes down from I don't know where, comes into the world as a fugitive, and then is running around here in swaddling clothes his whole entire life, don't have no place to stay. He's a carpenter, but don't know how to build nothing. <laughs> so... I'm just kind of trying to ask myself, when did the Most High take this approach to say, you know what, I am, I made all of this. And listen, when we go, when we go out of town and we travel, we say, you know what, if we go back to Africa, what class is we flying? Oh, we're going first class. We go first class. Yeah. Any place that we go, even as human beings, we want top tier. If money's no object, top tier everything. So explain to me why the Most High is functioning in this way. So he could just bring himself look. Why? The purpose for what? For what? Exactly. <laughs> when you have the power and Moshe has to, not only, he's reminding himself that you could wipe this whole entire people out. You have the ability. You've wiped out the world. Let me tell you something. <laughs> let me. Let me I'm, I'm, I want to say this. I want to say this right here. Hold your. Just go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Right. Absolutely. Because last week, <laughs> last week, we talked about the Most High. We did. Okay. We did. This week, we're back talking we about the, the Most High. High. Mm -hmm. Now, for those of you that don't understand the dialogue that Sean and I are having. And it's because, once again, you have been taught a, a form of worship. And the form of worship that you've been taught is centers around music and, and making a lot of noise. No. Sean and I are sitting here for the last two podcasts, and we are worshiping. That's it. <laughs> That's it. When you hear us talking about the Most High in the context that we're talking about the Most High in, we are worshiping. That's exactly what we're doing. And that might seem odd, but what is the worship is out of the pontifications and meditations of the heart. Because, because these things that we're yeah. saying are rolling off of our lips. It's not something that we have to go research to do. No, when we talk about the Most High in the context that you've heard us in the last two podcasts, it is a form of worship. Mm -hmm. And any time that you can sit and you can do this in the presence of anybody, you're in a form. You're in a form of worship, and it is the purest worship that you can be in mm. because it's not emotional. Mm -hmm. It's factual. Mm -hmm. It's experiential. Mm -hmm. It rolls out of your heart based upon the experience that you've had in knowing who he is and knowing the capability and knowing the promises that he has made to you as an individual mm -hmm. and as a nation of people. Right. And that's what that gets back to that, that issue that you were, where we were talking about earlier, the experiential knowledge of knowing something. And having that foundation supplanted inside you and then be able to walk it as a lifestyle and then out of the, walking it as a lifestyle, see the man, manifestation of all the good things that come out of that lifestyle. You have nothing but adoration for, right. for the most high. So when we're listening to jacked up people <laughs> like 
Ben Billy Billy Car Carson, and you listen to podcasts with him and people like Danica Patrick, you're listening to individuals that have no experiential understanding nor experience with the Most High that gives them the authority to speak on the Most High in any context at all. Mm -hmm. That's the reason why they have to go to these existential uh, places that, <laughs> right. that are misinformation. Yeah, they go to these places that make them sound as if they're, they're informed. In informed and intelligent. Right. But when you know text and you know scripture, you know, oh, okay, let me, that's, that's Dougie Doodle. Let's get, let's just, let's just go, go get, I hope you, I hope you brought a sack around, I brought a sack <laughs> with you for your, for your dog. <laughs> yeah, because you're going, because you're going to need it. Because you need to pick this up. <laughs> that's right. That's right. And that, until you have the exponential knowledge and understanding, it's just going to be, it's just going to be lip service. Yeah. It's what it's really going to be. Yeah. At the end of the day. Yeah. Well, you know what? Yeah. Um, this has been Rabbi Robert B. Holman yeah. Jr. Yeah, and, a good place. Yeah, and this is Sean Appleton. And this has been Hebrews, Hebrews in, in Exile. exile. Shalom. Shalom.